Please welcome the director of the School of Communication, Dr. Larry Gross. Welcome to the 2009 commencement, the Annenberg School for Communication. I'd like to begin by welcoming all of our graduates, their family, friends, and guests. And let's begin by recognizing the class. We'll do it in order of degrees. When I call the degree, if you would rise, but remain rising until everybody has, is standing. We'll begin with candidates for the degree of PhD, Doctor of Philosophy in Communication. I don't think we have any Masters of Communication. We'll keep moving. Masters of Public Diplomacy. <laughs> Masters of Global Communication. <laughs> Masters of Communication Management. Please remain standing. Uh, candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Communication. The class of 2009. Now, before you sit down, I would ask the class of 2009 to turn and recognize your parents and those who have helped you get through and succeed. We know who we're giving the diplomas to today, but we also know who deserves a large part of the credit for your accomplishments, and we would like to acknowledge them. Thank you. Please be seated. There are various honors and awards noted in the program, and I'll mention them again later, but I'd like to note a few of our students who are graduating today. One, Chelsea Lawn, a double major in communication and English who won a Fulbright scholarship and will be teaching English in Thailand next year. Chelsea joins a recent tradition of Annenberg majors winning Fulbright scholarships. She is the sixth Annenberg student to win a Fulbright since 2007. I'd also like to acknowledge Abigail Nokan, who received the university's 2009 Global Scholar Prize, one of only six students across the USC campus to win this award, and Abigail will be studying at the London School of Economics in the fall. And I can't resist acknowledging as well two of our graduates whose accomplishments extend beyond the classroom. Rebecca Sony, 2008 Olympic gold medalist and two-time silver medalist at the Beijing Summer Olympics. And Mark Sanchez, who led the Trojans I guess you've heard of him. I'd like now to introduce the faculty who are seated behind me. I'll begin at this end. Associate Dean Abigail Kahn. Dean Ernest Wilson.
someone whom Ernie will introduce in a few minutes, <laughs> Professor Tom Goodnight, <laughs> Professor Nick Cull, <laughs> Professor Patty Riley, <laughs> Professor Rebecca Weintraub, <laughs> Professor Gordon Stables, <laughs> someone whom Gordon will introduce in a little while, Professor Ken Serino, <laughs> Professor Sandra Bolrokic. <laughs> Moving back around, we have two visitors, two guests from the Marshall School who are here to give diplomas to their daughters who are graduating with us. We welcome Professors Holder and Crookson from the Marshall School. Professor Janet Falk, <laughs> Professor Tom Hallahan, <laughs> Professor Randy Lake, <laughs> Professor Stacy Smith, <laughs> we're keeping count on the audio meter here. <laughs> it's up to you, Dan, we'll see. Uh, uh, Assistant Director of the School of Communication, Imri Masaros. Many of your best friend, many of yours best friends, Sydney Martinez, Director of Student Advising, <laughs> Professor Peter Manji, <laughs> Professor Michael Cody, <laughs> Professor Daniela Barrofio Bota, <laughs> <Very good. laughs> Professor Susan Resnick West, <laughs> Professor Ben Lee. Professor Dimitri Williams, <laughs> Professor Allison Trope, <laughs> Professor Francois Barr, <laughs> Professor Sasha Strauss, <laughs> Professor Colleen Keo, <laughs> and Professor Dan Durbin. Uh, that was pretty good. <laughs> now you'll have to top that as I introduce Dean Ernest Wilson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning. This is a school of communications. We have to communicate effectively. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, I do want to thank Larry Gross uh, for his leadership of this school, uh, both his intellectual leadership as well as his institutional leadership uh, as the director. Uh, and I know I speak for the entire faculty when I say that he is one of the great assets to the Annenberg School, and so I would really like to give him a round of applause as well. I, uh, I apologize for being a little bit late, but the, uh, the governor had so many so secret service and people who wanted to say hello, so all of us were late. So we should blame this on the man I'm about to introduce in a moment, because he is the governor's next door neighbor, literally. <laughs> so we'll, we'll hear more about that in a moment, I'm sure. Um, but I do want to offer each and every one of the members of the class of 2009 uh, our great congratulations. We are so proud of you. You have done such wonderful things. And speaking from the heart, uh, we will all miss you terribly uh, because we have really learned from you. You have been uh, our teachers as well as our, as our students. Uh, and I certainly want to uh, thank the parents and friends and loved ones who are here. Uh, we welcome you to the school. And I want to say on behalf of the faculty, Congratulations to all of you for producing such wonderful students whom you then sent to us and shared with us. I just have a few remarks that I want to make before our, I introduce our uh, commencement speaker. And of course they have to do with the role of communications in our modern democratic society. And at the Annenberg School, I know that you have learned that communications is coming to be at the center of everything we do. In a post-industrial society, communications is at the center. 
in our industries, whether it's law or business or health, as you have studied, communications is at the center. And what better place to study communications at the center than the center of the communications industry right here in Los Angeles. And so we think that this is a, a tremendous opportunity for all of you uh, as you move forward in, in the next cycle of your life uh, to take advantage of this wonderful city. And we hope that you are well prepared to do so uh, by the teaching that you have received here. One of the things that happens with the information revolution is the whole notion of teaching and learning is changing radically. The old idea was the sage on the stage. We're now moving into a situation where we are the guide on the side. Um, and this involves not only teachers, formal teachers teaching you the students, but students working collaboratively, in groups, teaching one another. And the little secret that I have to tell you, this is sort of like a union secret, I'm not supposed to say this, but the students also teach the faculty. Especially in this time of radical technological change, the students help us to understand as faculty, as teachers, the way in which these new media are playing out in very, very different ways than they did when we were undergraduates or, or graduate students. As we come to the end of this academic year, in addition to marking the end of your own personal cycle, you have witnessed over the course of your four years or two years or the time that you have been with us, other cycles as well, political, economic, and technological. The political cycle culminated this year, as you know very well, in an historic election in which young voters, people your age and probably people in this audience, voted in record numbers for Republicans, for Democrats, for independents. And it, so it shows a new element, a new period of the political cycle. As I don't need to remind you, we're also experiencing an economic cycle, the downturn of an economic cycle, which is going to be a challenge uh, for all of us. There's also the technological cycle the kinds of new technological innovations that we have to communicate effectively with one another. As you move forward from this school, you will be entering your own cycle. And we would like to remind you and invite you to think of yourself not as a graduate, but as an alum, that you remain a member of the Annenberg family, that we look forward to being in touch with you through whatever means of communication you find most convenient, whether it's Twitter or that old-fashioned thing called a letter. Uh, we would welcome communication with you. We have events every year that uh, invite all our alums to come back and return to let us know how you're doing. Um, and so we would very much like to uh, make sure that you, that you do that as well. I would like now to um, introduce to you someone who has been a great friend of this school, who is a member of our Board of Counselors, and someone who really gets the idea of communication and how rapidly it is changing and affecting our lives. Jarl Mohn, our speaker, has been a leader and entrepreneur in the media business for more than 40 years founding such companies that you may have heard of as E! Entertainment, uh, Television, and Liberty Digital. As you know, one of the, the themes of this school is innovation. And the notion is that in this kind of environment, you either innovate or you go out of business. You innovate or you fail. As our earlier speaker said today, you have to think outside the box, especially in this field of, of communications. And what Jarl Mohn represents is someone who has thought outside of the box, someone who has innovated and, and provided an example of something that I hope each and every one of our graduates will do, and that is to be a leader. It's not enough to survive these changes. We want you to thrive, and we want you to lead. And I can think of no one who is a better inspiration, uh, someone who has helped to define the field of communications, and someone who will continue to define the field of, 
of Communications. Let me welcome to the uh, lectern Mr. Jarl Mohn. Jarl. Man, did you pick a great time to go out and get a job. I mean, come on, it's the elephant in the room, right? I want to know, honestly, how many of you are a little bit freaked out about trying to go out and get a job right now? Huh? I know I would be. Actually, the group looks a lot more confident than I would have been, so confident group. I'm impressed. Hopefully, some of the things we're going to talk about uh, this morning are, uh, may be helpful. I'm hoping that they are. I'd like to thank Dean Wilson. I'd like to thank Larry Gross for inviting me here today, and I want to congratulate all of you on your great accomplishment. It's fantastic. I love USC. My oldest daughter, Katrina, is a grad from SC, class of 2007. I love the Annenberg School, um, and I'm proud to be on the Board of Counselors. You picked a great school to go to. Now, Larry Gross ordered me to keep my comments to 10 minutes or under. And the only question anyone asked me here today, and I was asked repeatedly by the other people on the dais, was, how long is your speech? <laughs> so I get it. And I began my career as a disc jockey when I was 15 years old, so I understand timing a little bit. But because of that restriction on time, there are a lot of things I'm not going to be able to tell you about. I'm not going to be able to tell you about the time I set myself on fire drinking flaming shooters at MTV. <laughs> My career playing records in a strip club in Indianapolis. <laughs> the time I got into a big fight with some very angry lesbians because I hired Howard Stern at E. <laughs> and my daughter last night, I was kind of going through this practicing last night, and my daughter said, Oh, you got to tell him about the time he got thrown out of the Halcyon Hotel in London with The Cure. <laughs> but we don't have time for those. All those stories are better told over cocktails anyway and not at a solemn occasion like this. I'm going to try avoiding uh, the cliches one regularly hears at these commencement speeches about following your passion, striving for greatness, making a difference. All those things, they're true. I believe them all. I'm just guessing, just guessing that you've heard these before and you don't need me repeating them. So what I'm gonna do is tell you three very short stories about my life and career and three themes that were helpful to me. Maybe they'll be relevant, maybe they'll be helpful to you. Uh, and some of them are things that we usually don't talk about in polite company. Although some of them were actually referenced uh, by your valedictorian who was terrific this morning. He was great as was the governor. The three themes, dumb luck, crushing failure, and delusions and self-deception. I mentioned earlier I began my career as a disc jockey when I was 15 years old. I worked at this rinky-dink little radio station in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. It was in the middle of a cow pasture. We have some Doylestonians! <laughs> my first job was playing religious tapes on Sunday from the churches and the local preachers. And every half hour, I got to do a station identification. I would clear my throat. I'd open the microphone, and in my massive 15-year-old voice, I would say, WBUX Doylestown. <laughs> I made Minnie Mouse sound masculine. <laughs> Eventually, the station grew desperate enough to have me fill in as a disc jockey and play records. I was horrible. I was dreadful. One day, the general manager of the radio station called me into his office, very kindly, very gently told me that I might want to think about pursuing a different career. <laughs> of course, I thought I was fantastic. I used to listen to the radio stations in New York. I used to listen to the stations in Philadelphia. And I knew I was better than, or just as good as the people on the air there. I was totally delusional. I sucked. <laughs> everybody knew it, except me. I told everybody I knew that I was going to be a disc jockey at one of those big New York radio stations by the time I was 25. People could not hide their amusement or their laughter, which only pissed me off and made me try harder. And ultimately, I did improve. When I was 25, I was hired for an afternoon show at WNBC in New York, one of the big stations at the time. 
I was never really that great, but I was good enough, and I got there. Had I known how truly terrible I was when I was 15, I would have never tried. And that's what's convinced me of the power of big goals. I believe that if people are not laughing at your ambitions and your goals, then your dreams are not big enough. My second story is about dumb luck. A couple of years ago, I was having dinner with a group of friends of mine that are all very successful CEOs. Someone in our group asked if any of us had had one lucky break, one lucky break that was responsible for the beginning of our, our various successes. Every one of us had a story. My story was about offering a friend of mine, when, this is when I was a disc jockey in Louisville, Kentucky of all places, uh, from a competing radio station, he needed a place to stay until he got his own apartment. And I said, sure, why not? One evening he was out, the phone rings, I answered it, it was a long distance call, it was a friend of his from another city, it turned out to be a young program director from a radio station in Pittsburgh. I struck up a conversation with him. We ended up becoming friends and we would speak regularly on the phone. Uh, the guy was Bob Pittman, he went on to great success. Four years after that phone call, when we met, he hired me at the station I was telling you about in New York, at WNBC. And nine years after that, he hired me to run VH1 and then MTV. We'd been friends for 37 years. And it all happened because I let a friend crash at my apartment. <laughs> Everyone in our group of 10 CEOs had a story something like that. And I asked the group, what would have happened if that specific accident, that specific stroke of luck had not occurred? Some of the people felt that if it wasn't that stroke of luck, it might have been another. Others weren't so sure. I'm kind of in that camp. But I will tell you, I've been lucky because I've had a series of great strokes of luck in my life and my career. The moral of the story, if one of your competitors needs a place to stay, let them. <laughs> and if the phone rings, answer it. Now I want to talk about crushing failures. A few months ago, I was having uh, drinks with an investment banker friend of mine who had just been laid off. Uh, she was very upset. She'd never been laid off before. And uh, she had said, she, I had never, she said, I've never failed at anything. Graduated top of her class. So of course, being the empathetic guy I am, I'm, I'm starting to chuckle a little bit. This just upset her more. She, I said, look, I've never been laid off. I have never been part of a work reduction, a workforce reduction. And she was stunned. She says, why are you telling me this? I said, because even though I've never been laid off, I have been fired. I've been singled out. They say, everyone else, you can stay, but you, you go. And don't darken our doorway again. It's happened to me three times. This instantly made her feel better. The first time I was fired, I was 23 not much older than most of you. I was working at a radio station in Miami, Y100. I'd only worked there for three months. I didn't fit in. I didn't sound like the rest of the station. They should have never hired me. I should have never taken the job, but there I was. I was fired. I was devastated. I had never failed before. It was soul crushing. I felt horrible. I ended up moving back to Louisville, Kentucky, where I'd been working before to take a job at an even smaller radio station just so I could be near my friends and be back in my comfort zone. Uh, about three months later at that station, they offered me a program director's job. And that's my, that was my entrance into management. And I realized then that I was actually better in management than I was on the air. And three years after that, the owners of the station offered me the chance to become business partners with them. We went on over the next seven years to build a group of small radio stations that we owned. It would have never happened had I not been fired in Miami. My other big failure, one of the three, in 1989, when I was running MTV, I put the raunchy comedian Andrew Dice Clay on the Video Music Awards. He promised he was going to keep it clean. He didn't. We got the highest ratings the show had had up to that point, and I lost my job. Thanks, Andrew. Again, I was devastated. I loved running MTV. It was a hoot. I, I had a blast. And a huge part of my identity, the way I thought about myself, was wrapped up in that job. It crushed me. But about two days later, I got a phone call from some of the folks at HBO. They wanted me to run a cable channel that was then called Movie Time. Uh, they'd been trying to fill the job for nine months. No one would take the job. 
But I was desperate. I wanted a CEO job, and they gave me an ownership stake, so I took the job. I moved out to Los Angeles, and we launched, uh, we relaunched the channel as E! Entertainment Television. I ended up staying there for nine years. We grew it into a hugely valuable business, and it was a career maker for me. I had a ball. I would have never done it had I not been pushed out of MTV. So I've learned that as painful as it is, failure has been my friend. And it could be your friend, too. I see somebody's writing it down here. That's good. Put it in your wallet. I promised Dean Wilson and, and Larry Gross that I would keep it short, so I'm going to wrap it up. I think we can all agree right about now you have the attention span of a spider monkey on meth. I promised you three stories, and I promised I'm going to give you three wishes, and no, the first wish can't be unlimited wishes, okay? The first wish is that you get boundless amounts of dumb luck, though I suspect that the luck you get is going to be luck that you've earned. You've already made at least one great decision, and that was choosing USC and the Annenberg School. The USC network is legendary. Your friends, your classmates, alum, faculty, they're all going to be of great help to you if you let them. By coming here, you've upped your odds of being lucky. That's true. I hope you recognize that good luck when it's presented to you and that you exploit it to the fullest extent allowed by law. My second wish is that you have no failures. Now, this is highly unlikely. Because I told you, failure's been my friend. I have a funny feeling it could be yours. But it's never fun. It, it never is. So when you have your failures, I hope that they aren't devastating and that you're able to weather them well and that you use them as catalysts and springboards to even better opportunities. And finally, I wish for you to be crazy, delusional, and wildly outrageous in the way you see yourself. You saw Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Dr. Schwarzenegger, speak this morning about this subject. I don't know if you ever saw the film Pumping Iron, right? It's fabulous. You look and you go, this guy's going all the way. He's going all the way. He had a big vision for himself, and he conquered bodybuilding. He conquered acting. He's now the governor. Will he conquer the budget? <laughs> the great American philosopher Gene Simmons of KISS my personal mentor said, life is too short to have anything but delusional notions about yourself. Yes, he really said that. So my last wish is that your ideas and your schemes and your plans are so big that everyone laughs, but that you get to have the last laugh. I'm rooting for you. Sorry, y'all, that wasn't one of your failures. <laughs> we will now confer the graduate degrees and then the undergraduate degrees. We start with the graduate degrees. So a few ground rules. The photo area is to my left, your right. And we're asking parents and friends to be conscious of other people if you need to take a photograph. Keep in mind that a professional photographer will be taking a photograph and you will all receive a complimentary professional photograph that probably won't satisfy you. <laughs> so please keep moving so that you don't block other people. The students will come up row by row and please hand your card to the name reader so the name will sound right. You will receive your diploma cover and follow the ushers back to your seat where we would like you to remain until the end of the program. After the ceremony, please join us for a reception in the area to my right, your left, just outside the tent. And graduates, please accept a, de a, de a gift from Dean Wilson and the school, which will be at a table at the alumni 
relations table just outside to the right. So we will now begin with the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. I ask all the candidates to stand. This will be a little different. As each candidate comes up, they will be hooded by their advisor and they will receive a diploma from Professor Thomas Goodnight, who is the director of the doctoral program. So, let's go. Amelia Arsenault. Amelia will be hooded by Professor Tom Goodnight. Christopher Chavez. Dr. Chavez will be hooded by Professor Michael Cody. Marsha Alison Dawkins. Dr. Dawkins will be hooded by Professor Randy Lake. Matthew D. Matsaganis. Dr. Matsaganis will be hooded by Professor and Associate Dean Sandra Ball Rokish. Megan Moran. Dr. Moran will be hooded by Professor Tom Goodnight. Sean M. Powers. Dr. Powers will be hooded by Professor Thomas Hollihan. Joy Stevens. Dr. Stevens will be hooded by Professor Janet Falk. <laughs> we will now confer the degree of Master of Arts in Public Diplomacy to the first class in this program. The second class? Second class. How fast they come along. The degrees will be conferred by Professor Nicholas Cole, director of the program. Yuri Zigelboim. Lorena Sanchez. Lisa Monique, Philadelphia. Lila Haddad, Nickelweight. Wendy Christine Crompton. Laura. Miles Wyatt Knowles Stephanie Shireen Sheikh Holislami Jana Panaritis. Hilary Eileen Tone.
Danielle Melissa Kelton. <laughs> Natasha Rastagari. <laughs> Stephanie Garden. Lydia Latif Marcos. Anush Rima Tatavosian. William Lon Ogborn. Manju Wong. Mark Robert Naylor. Catherine L. Hess. Noah Chestnut. We will now confer the degree of Master of Arts in Global Communication, the director of the program, Professor Patricia Riley, will give you the diploma. Jinyai Chin. Jean Dunn. Yenchang Li. Hao Yi Wang. Ragalina Sripada. Madhuri Shaker. J. Yu. Philip Haviana. Becca Popic Leonard. Jennifer Smith. Ryan Matthew Cunningham. Eula Gobner. Maya Yvonne Gautier. Laura Schwadhauer. Hunter. Amanda Beth Fine. Jane Ellen Allering. Catherine Varna. Sophie Rita Shearling. Richard Nevins. Joanna Janus. Susan Chang. Sandra Bangasser. Cha 
年欢。Lindsay Target。Declan McFarland, the first row of candidates for the degree of Master of Communication Management will stand. We will begin. Conferring degrees, Professor Rebecca Weintraub, director of the program, will give you your diploma. Rishma Gill. Shredha Daduja. Dave Nicholas Rogacki. <laughs> Megan Erin Gervin. Sarah Brannon Mooser. Amy Pengra. Sean Peter Tyner. <laughs> Melissa Anderson. <laughs> Rosette Gonzalez. <laughs> Christopher Godin Howland. Stephanie Alice Fleischman. <laughs> Stacy Emily Levin. <laughs> Devran Shan Mustafolu. <laughs> Jamie Rose Schiff. Julian B. Jacobs. David Pierce Uffins. Ruthie Piles. Nani De La Pena. Samita Pudavarapa. Gil Bevan Flores Jr. Eric, excuse me, Aaron Stewart Pates. Kristen Alice Todd. Kara Molise. Heather Chris Lee. <laughs> Teresa Sheila Reese. Michelle Marie Sanford. Janae Lynn Jacobs. Sarah Elizabeth Bullock. Magali Anais 
Massa. Ashley Danielle Reynolds. Tanya Shatila. Christopher Justin Guitarte. Rachel Manzano Visita Wagoner. Chen Lee. Adrian and Belknap Boyce. Tashiana Lee J. Jefferson. Kristen Louise Wong. Peter Michael Aoun. Aaron Metzger. Arian McCachran. Wendy Lee Keller. Shira Liff Fife. Divya Valuri. Wendy Chang. Noel Moss. Taylor Daniel Grigsby. Christine Brittany Hoffman. Lindsay Elizabeth Sherman. Amanda Michelle Molina. Michelle Joanne DeArmas. Katie Beth Barker. Linda Giu Sul. Angelique de Leblanc. Hilary Jin. Diane Foray. Bree Ann Louise Nixon. Natasha Kuzmanovich. Adrian Kadina. Deborah Yan Yu Chang. Taryn Christine Aguilar. Megan Kathleen Garfola. Rafael Lazzarini Santos. Donna Knowles. Manusit Fabasanant. Kushna Banu Mohammed. Marissa Ellen Davis. <laughs> La 
Hosanna Shante Smith. Casey Brittany Spruill. <laughs> Stephanie Ray Hickerson. <laughs> Kurt Michael Johnson. Alexis Claire Bornoff. Elsa Selsha Long. Luyao Zhen. Nancy Haoyun Wu. Yunjung Park. Kayang Monica Sun. Yishen Wang. Tina Yen Shen. Yi-Ting Zhang. Yu Sing Song. Kinnery Madrawala. Yuan Li Lin. Bilal Kaiser Tracy Olivia Cotton Zainab Gasham Lisa Heckerman Santana Good morning and thank you for the opportunity. I have the distinct pleasure to introduce the undergraduate and student representative at this ceremony. One of the great traditions that Annenberg has for our own satellite ceremony is that we provide a student speaker to really provide a student voice for this ceremony. And it's a difficult selection process, but I don't think that we could have found a better student this morning to serve as a representative of the experiences and the opportunities that you've had. Allison's biography is in your program, so I won't bore you with the long list of accomplishments. But the thing that I would say that makes her such an excellent choice to speak to you this morning is that she, like many of you, have excelled in the classroom. And I, like many of my colleagues on the stage, can attest that Allison is an outstanding student in the classroom. But in addition to that, Allison is a great representative to speak for you and as part of your voice this morning because she has taken the theme of this morning and excelled and taken advantage of opportunities and continued to persevere even when there would be an easier or a less ambitious path. In that biography, you might notice that in the last 18 to 24 months, Allison has spent a semester interning in Washington at the White House. She was worried, however, that she wasn't going to be able to complete international studies as part of her program, so she applied and was accepted as part of our international communication studies program. So there I had the great opportunity to study and work with Allison for a month last summer in Europe as we traveled with 16 of our undergraduate students to, to experience when working with business, corporate, and non-governmental leaders in communication fields across the European continent. But Allison wasn't content to sit back and relax at the end of that. I know I needed to. 
But she came back and not only was one of the leading voices on campus as part of the campaign, but she was also part of the national campaign, often having to leave to attend to do advance work for national campaign events. The biography includes that somehow in the middle of that, she found time for a number of service programs, whether as part of her sorority or the part of other campus organizations, or this past year she spent a tremendous amount of time and energy to help get the Neighborhood Debate League, a program that the Annenberg School has sponsored to expand debate programs in area high school off the ground. In all of these things, Allison has been an excellent student and an outstanding representative, so I can think of no better person to speak to you today as your voice for this ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, Allison Huff. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Stables, for the very generous introduction. Um, fellow graduates, congratulations. We've made it. We're here today. We've, we've worked our, butt off, our butts off as the governor reminded us and encouraged us to keep on doing. So I have two, act, two very difficult acts to follow with the governor. I haven't made any movies lately, um, like The Kindergarten Cop, um, and I have never lit myself on fire. So with that, um, I have a hard act to follow, but bear with me and hopefully I have some inspiring words for you guys. I'm so proud to be a part of Annenberg, to call myself an Annenberg student. There are students here that are involved in nearly every organization on campus, in honor societies, sports teams, you name it. USC, USC Annenberg students are there blazing the way. We have high aspirations and will be pursuing a wide array of career paths. Although we are an incredibly diverse class of graduates, we share a special bond once as Annenberg students, and now as alumni, and members of the Trojan family. Today we also likely share a common concern, the recession, the financial crisis, the declining job market, you name it. These days, it is seemingly impossible to escape the inevitable anxieties incited from the reality of entering the worst job market in recent years. Okay, to mention the economy in my speech today seems a bit depressing, I know. And it's perhaps a bit cliche, because you can't avoid it. Every newspaper you look at, every TV you turn on, um, we can't avoid it. But to avoid the, the subject entirely would be to disregard, I wager to bet, the greatest concern we share is the class of 2009. And my question for us all today is, what impact will we allow these challenges to have on our future. If we accept the commission we have before us, we will not be known merely as the generation who, who faced great challenges, but the generation, the USC graduates, who overcame and ushered in a brighter future for the generations to come. There's no getting around it. We do face extraordinary times, times that will one way or the other influence the next steps we take in life. However, ordinary times invite ordinary responses. Extraordinary times, times such as these, demand extraordinary action by great leaders. And whether you plan on pursuing a career in advertising, politics, business, entertainment, or law, we've all been prepared now as Trojans to face our own personal challenges but also take on the great issues that our world and human society face now and in the future. USC Annenberg class of 2009, we are equipped to lead, we have the privilege to lead, and we have the responsibility to lead. As USC alumni, as Annenberg alumni, as members of the class of 2009, how will we lead? We must lead with optimism. In light of the job market, it may seem inevitable that many of us here today will succumb to cynicism and negativity. Yet the spirit of public service and academic inquiry nourished at USC and at Annenberg has also taught us that progress for all people in this world is possible. In spite of the hurt, oppression, and inequality in the world, more people today than ever before in human history live lives of hope and opportunity. 
This progress, of which we are beneficiaries, is the product of deliberate, unrelenting work, not of cynics or passive followers, but of visionaries and optimist, optimistic leaders who refused to accept that they were powerless to make a positive impact in the world. We must lead with humility. We can all too easily fall into the trap of attributing our success to our own intellect, hard work, and wise decision making. And yes, we all sit here today because these qualities characterize and define us. Nevertheless, it's equally as true that our own merits alone did not see us to this great milestone today. We must never lose sight of how and why we have achieved what we have. Everyone's story is different, but whether it was the generosity and sacrifices of your family or the unrelenting effort of a teacher who never gave up, we've all been blessed with many opportunities. Throughout our country and around the world, there are countless people who are just as intelligent, hardworking, and deserving of achievement as you and me. But for whatever reason, whether it be due to financial or circumstantial constraints, they will not graduate from USC or any other university for that matter. I do not remind you all of this reality to invoke feelings of guilt, but rather to give us the right perspective. To lead with humility is to give, inspire, and serve others, not because of guilt or obligation, but because we're educated people and we recognize that we are who we are today because others have lived for something greater than themselves and have invested their energy in helping us meet our goals. We must lead with creativity. The greatest danger is to live a life seeing the world only as it is and not what it can be. And during our time here at USC, our professors have not told us what to think or what to believe in, but rather our professors have taught us to think and reason analytically and then in turn communicate those ideas to others. And I believe that our greatest innovation and ingenuity can truly come to life, not in spite of the adversities we face, but through the adversities, through those extraordinary circumstances, the trying and uncertain moments of life. USC has equipped us to think and reason in such a way that if you accept the challenge of the unknown, you can be the author, the entrepreneur, the educator, the policymaker that defines not only your own legacy in this world, but the legacy of generations to come. The new realities of this world we live in remind us that we're not entitled to be successful, powerful, or famous, but we have the privilege as Trojans and as human beings to pursue a life of greatness. Greatness is not determined by the wealth or status you acquire, the people you know, or the title in front of your name, because I know all those things will be impressive that you all will do someday. But greatness is instead inquired through the, through the pursuit of a purpose. And the possession of the drive to serve a cause that propels you individually and us collectively to live for something greater than our own personal gratification. Success, fame, or power, they're all wonderful things, but not an ends within themselves. They're a means to a greater end, or at least they should be. True leadership, leadership that can help change the world and help promote greater freedom, opportunity, prosperity, peace and security for more people than previous generations have known can and should be the future we pursue. We've had a wonderful opportunity to receive an education at one of the top universities in the world. But our Trojan experience does not conclude today. Today simply marks a point in which we are ready to go out into the world with the opportunity to be the great leaders of our generation. After today, what really matters though is not what we've learned, but how we make use of our knowledge and experiences in the days and years to come. We will follow different paths and be propelled by different passions, but we all share the common capacity for greatness. Graduates of the USC Annenberg class of 2009,
Let us not lose perspective. It can be hard. Just while writing my speech, I was looking at the newspaper and um, trying to just brainstorm what I should talk about, and it said, class of 2009, cursed. No, not true. <laughs> they haven't met a Trojan, so they should rewrite the article. But let us not lose perspective, even though it can be hard at times, and face uncertainties, inevitable challenges that we'll encounter, because as Trojans, we can choose to achieve greatness. While I stare out into the crowd of faces before me, I see people whom I have the confidence will indeed become great leaders who will change the world. So pursue your passions, chart turbulent waters, inspire others, solve problems, and fight on. Thank you so much. We will now confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Communication. The diplomas will be given by Professor Ken Serino, who was winning Favorite Teacher Award when Dan Durbin and Stacy Smith were still in undergraduate school. Allison Christine Huff. Brookston Gels, Catherine Allison Holder, Amanda Police Fallen, Christina. Stephanie Lynn Roberts Amanda Camargo Kristen Amico Kame Chelsea Mara Lawn Vera Victoria Rose Doreen Moore Stephanie Claire Pintara Rona Hightower Elizabeth Marie Rollin Alexander Halimi <laughs> Tiffany Rodnia <laughs> Jennifer Adu <laughs> Candice Satara Nicole Lena Marjorie Solberger. Melanie Ruth Casabar. Natalie Ann Camunias. Daniela Orta. Crystal Giselle. Corral. Cassie Layla Rice. Brinsley Care Sackow. Kira Alexandra Buck. John 
Jonathan Michael Sorgman. Josh Drew Robert. Allison Nicole Campbell. Caitlin Maureen Wise. Marissa Ashley Maxwell. Cassandra Zwanich. Morgan Rose Elizabeth O'Malley. Ashley Natasha Singh. Marie Naso <laughs> Madeline Ann Welty Whitney Ashton Kushner Jacqueline Joe Gilbert. George Matthew Thabit. Luosha Chen. Jessica Hua. Rachel Yang Yi Wu. Sophia Nami Oyama. Jennifer Kayon Kim. Maya Debir Pollock. Elizabeth Ply, Summer Rose Tucker, Joshua Michael Buck Ortiz, Cassandra Wilson, Courtney Hamilton. Renee S. Negrete. Mark Sanchez. Sam Hua. Paige M. Garutsky. Ariana Ragendahl. Chandler Ford. Nori Marwan Abu Ross. Monica May. Jesuda J. Tia. Gazala Adil Malubu. Christine Dennis. Vanessa Budaraja, Paramita Sudarjo, Cynthia.
Lydia Lowe. Christine Nicole McCuchin. Alexandra Noel Hernandez. Jamie Hughes. Alexandra Andre Garino. Summer Jean Berry. Raquel Alexandra Rodriguez. Angel Haro. Lena Jokum. Haley Brooke Raider. Kelly Lynn Crabtree. Caroline Michelle Ellis. Angela Maria Pargas. Sean Drama McCarthy. Gregory Chase Wapnick. Brandon Michael Lamont. Christopher John Farina. Sue Park. Candace Bianca Evans. Ryan Marcel Houston. Ho Yi Chewy Lauren Mayumi Maikai Paula Renee Rowe Maggie Amelia King Alexa Khan Hauser. Jenna Andrea Hannon. Hi, Reem Lee. Diana S. Lee. Alex Jesus Sandoval. Jackie G. Burrell. Jane S. U. Aaron Reiko Yakamuzu. Catherine Elizabeth Chamberlain. Lisa Marie Fight. Michelle Nicole Amara. Jacqueline Michelle Nelson. Millie Hatfield. Trisha Ann Lanigan. Angela Laney Jan 
Cantorino. Amy Elizabeth Massey. Monique Gixola. Christina Leanne Locke. Mary Frances Van Dyke. Emily Jane Gerlach. Sogol Ackberry. Justin Feldman. Mallory Geist. Megan Elizabeth Gerardino. Joanne Pack. Alexandra Alexis Mannix. Adam Schwartz. Lily Noel Rogers. Yeah. Rebecca Sony. Sharice yeah. Renee Deal. Braverman Renee Robin Garrett Allison Suzanne Golditch Amy Rebecca Lieber William Charles G. Sarah Jane White. Christina Natalie Dean. Dean Rosalini Jillian Jenkins Feinberg Jane Ogden Helfern June Ho Shin Jonathan Tyrrell Stallsmith. Kimberly Ann Krieger. Aaron Dodd Gorman. Natalie Michelle Steiner. Rebecca Renee De Castillo. Yvonne Lopez Valenzuela. Jackson Jones Manny. Samuel Gordon Taggart. Guman Tyler Joshua Deutsch Danielle Elizabeth Robbins Billiana Ing Josh 
Joshua Ross Sharp. Brad Davis Solnutzer. Boyma Dominique Blake. Alyssa May Reinhardt. Roxanne Marie Norcio. Casey Jeanette McMacken. Anna Marguerite Klingler. Melissa Marie Falcini. Jessica Mary Bellotti. Samantha Lynn Auerbach. Sammy Ann Craigstein. Cheyenne Park Steele. Karen Chen. Rebecca Lou Land de Verde. Inara Narantha. Emily Hearn Friedman. Vanessa Amy Hill. Dana Dofar. Elizabeth Drescher. Kelly Jamison Finch. Hannah Bauer. Lauren Hannah Bauer. Alyssa Michelle Clark. Amy M. Louts. Natasha Karina Esror. Brian Chung Kwok Lee. Daniel Theron Bell. Dan Zhao. Brooke White. Holly Ubleidinger. Casey Mo Chan. Michael Bulls. Andrew Myers Harmon. Whitney Young. Tiffany Kathleen Anstopoulos. Sally McDonald Newsenfeld. Thank you so much. Alexandra Caitlin White.
Catherine Ann Kinnell. Catherine Grace Hillman. Samantha Lee Bishop. Whitney Ann Middleton. Carly Elise Lucio. Alexandra Elise Brandenberger. Mary Catherine Burris. Jacqueline Lauren Barquette. Keith Aaron Wilkinson. Tracy Meredith Horowitz. Courtney Elise Batsoffen. Rachel Ellen Height. Brianne Porcaro. Shauna Michelle Rappaport. Natalie Erdelt. Alana Frankel Mednick. Natalie Amber Greenberg. Ji Young Lee. Julia Chung. Nicolette Obiaderi Omoila. Lindsay Nicole Woody. Simone Elena Andrews. Caitlin Felicia King. Caroline Keiko Hughes. Isabella Josephsburg. Stuart Warren Kramer. Dominic Ireland. Robert C. Tellus. Lindy K. Moffat. Danielle Allegra Romo. Katie Rochelle Bronstein. Nicole Marie Anthony. Megan Ashley Ahern. Elise Christina Avila. Kristen Marie Haugen. Alex Veronica Carr. Jessica Lynn. Jessica Jumi Kim.
Julian Yushin Chow. Erica Griffin. Erica Marie Hill. Colleen Andrea Martin. Joanne Kim. Gabrielle Alexandra Jacob. Ya Yakub. Ashley Michelle Hanley. Robert Alexander Grace. Jillian Kathleen William Williams. Abigail Ann Nocon. Ariel Samantha Shawlin. Bridget Marie Cassily. Maria, Mary Hovagimian. Jewel Renee Peterson. Charla Alexandra Lewis. Kayla Bahure Pengame. Lindsay Nicole Levine. Brittany Ann Noble. Sierra Noel Huffman. Kim Wang. Judy Chen. Jessica Chow. Isabel Christine Pleno. Brian Dean Fisher. Ryan Ole. Crystal Daniela Bailey. Ryan Price McQuilton. Lonnie Marie Shotlow Grincon. <laughs> Lindsay Marie Mead. <laughs> Natalie Jo Powers Osterling. <laughs> Lawrence Aristide Del Santo II. Whitney Kendall Miller. David Jernigan. Jennifer Nicole Lutsky. Lisa Subalvuro. Roxanne Elise Schur. Shane Anthony Nolan. Yeah. 
Samuel Zev Goodwin. Jessica Kramer Potter. Devin Aline McCloskey. Nicole Magnum Campa. Juho Kwan. Matthew Lee Malamud. Michelle, Michelle Jessica Au. Jamie Lee Gardner. David Uregian. Claire McNelly Adams. Alexandra Francis Nye. Emily Shum. Julia Hawkgar Wong. Anna Minerva Trinidad. Martin Urella. Chris. Michael Lawrence Mandel. Rebecca Gina Marie Darrow. Casey Dana Kent. Marissa Rachel Cronenberg. Shannon Elise Bergie. Rachel Kathleen Caton. Britta Kate Nicholson. Chelsea Chen. Ayumi Chuyema. Amanda Marie Bruin. Danielle Ruth Bannon. Jacqueline Garcia. Jonathan Roger Solis. Matthew Merida Jordan. Peter Michael Rudy. Gareth Holly Hornberger. John Paul Elma Barsenas. Derek Martin Salet. Elizabeth Ann Webster. Alexandra Madeline Marie Van Eyden. Marie Claire St. John.
Jesse Alexander Lack. Brian Stephen Ozonian. Jake Spencer Nordwin III. Felicia Capadia. Waverly Paradox. Alexandra Ann Bengochia. Haley Danielle Hackendale. Let's give one more round of applause for the class of 2009. I'd like to invite you all now to the reception over here on my right, your left, and be sure and pick up the gift at the alumni relations table. Keep in touch. <laughs>